Hey guys, Chris here. In today's video, we are going to do a winter range and efficiency challenge to see just how far the Audi e-tron can go when it is cold outside. When I woke up this morning, it was minus seven degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna show you guys now, it is currently minus five degrees Celsius outside. We are currently charging. And I tried yo-yoing it, you know, just uh, full acceleration, like five to 10 times before connecting to the charger. And we are cold gating, yeah. 86 kilowatts is our maximum speed. Um, we are going to go to uh, SO here in Brumendal, which is about 129 kilometers away from here. The ambient temperature there should be, um, <laughs> around minus 10 to 12 degrees so it should just get colder and colder and colder um, so that is today's test to just see how far the audi e-tron can go when it is really cold outside and i know a lot of you people will say well minus 12 degrees celsius or minus 5 degrees celsius isn't cold where i live it's like minus 30 or 40 or 100 yeah that might be i don't live where you live um so I'm not able to do that test. You are welcome to do that test yourself if you want to do it. But I can only work with the conditions I have. And just before we set off, guys, I think we're gonna to go to 100%. But before we set off, I'm gonna show you guys something very, very annoying and something very unfortunate. And that is, yeah. So you can see I'm connected to this Circle K charger here. And there is quite some tension on the cable. I can't park too far away from these and some of these chargers you have to get right up to these poles here. Yeah. So you might guess the next thing of this video is that the e-tron doesn't have a creep function and it actually rolls. So if you go off the brake it just rolls backwards and it doesn't have creep so if you go off the brake uh, it won't creep forward it just rolls backwards and then sometimes it's really hard to modulate. And yeah, I just give, gave it a bit too much gas. And look at this, guys. Yeah, really, really bad. Look at the plastic bits there. And I hit here. This side isn't too bad, but the other side, guys, look at this. So look at that. Yeah, that's bad. Um, hit here also. And look at all these plastic bits here. Yeah. I broke this front lip thing. It's dented there and it's broken there. So yeah, that is that is really, really annoying. Um, it's not the first time I've hit these poles because with some chargers, you just really have to get super, super close. And look how close I am, guys. How do you, mod how do you ca calculate that? So yeah, that is really unfortunate. I just hit it a bit too fast because the throttle is really hard to modulate sometimes with this car. So yeah bit of a bad start to the day but yeah so we're going to charge up to 100 percent and i will see you guys on the road we have now been on the road for a little more than 15 minutes we're about 27 kilometers outside of oslo and as you can see guys here it's really really winter wonderland we have a lot more snow than we have in oslo and that is due to the cold temperatures. As you can see here, guys, minus nine degrees Celsius. And our consumption has now rise to about 34.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But yeah, the longer we go on this road here, uh, we just entered the 110 zone, the more that consumption will rise with the temperature dropping. A little update guys, we are now driving along Mjösa. It started to cloud up a bit now, but the temperature is actually raised, if you want to call it raised. It's not as cold as it was just, you know, half an hour ago. We're at about six degrees uh, Celsius and the roads today are, you know, slightly, slightly damp or wet um, because it is so cold. Our consumption is around the same as it was half an hour ago, 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Not too much in it. Um, we have 52 kilometers left to go and 173 kilometers of range left, meaning that I don't think we're going to be able to make it back to Circle K at Fudeset without another charge stop. 
we are nearing Hamad and look at this guys look at that temperature minus 15 degrees Celsius yeah minus 15 and a half I'm wondering how cold it's gonna get today it is beautiful the weather now it's cleared up again and yeah usually that means uh, colder temperatures the beautiful Mjös Torna I think actually guys this is the tallest wooden structure in the world the prior tallest wooden structure in the world was in Bergen in Luxembourg. I'm going to show you that guys one one time when I'm in Bergen but look at this this is tall this is all made out of wood and glass so we are at the turn, turn around point at Brumendal taking off the E6 here and it is minus 11 degrees and 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers one hour and nine minutes on the road and then we've spent 45 percent state to charge meaning that we will not have enough juice to go back but one thing i do want to test i just i'm just going to stop here oh it's a bit slippery it's a bit slippery oh shit! yeah pure ice damn holy moly yeah damn yeah this is really really slippery okay so i just want to stop here because i want to check if the charging port will open up without a problem when it is as cold as it is yeah we're gonna stop at this bus stop here but yeah yeah it's really it's like black ice you can't see it's slippery and usually when it's minus this temperature um tires you know stick really well um yeah i'm gonna go out without a jacket tires do stick really well to uh, the road Woo -hoo. yeah that is cold let's see Oh yeah, we probably have to turn off the ignition, right? Okay, let's try this. <laughs> yeah, I've been reading on the Facebook forum for uh, e-tron uh, that a lot of people in the mountains in Norway now over the New Year's have had problems with their charging port. But yeah, that opened up without a problem, but it has been open. So it hasn't been, you know, stuck overnight. But you can see here, it really doesn't close properly. Yeah, it's struggling, guys. In minus 11 degrees Celsius, it is struggling. Yeah, we're going to push that shut. Okay, so let's <laughs> go ahead, start up the car, and let's get back to Oslo. Okay, guys, we are at Ionity Doll. Our state to charge is 7%. We have 19 kilometers of range left meaning we will not be able to go to Circle K Fudeset on one charge. So I think we're going to end the video here. No point in, you know, we're not timing this. We're only seeing how far we can go. Um, but we're going to do some calculations uh, to see, you know, our theoretical range. But just quickly, guys, 7% state to charge. As I said, our consumption has stabilized at 34.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Average speed 112 kilometers an hour because you know almost this whole trip has been in 110 kilometer zones, and yeah, um, yeah, one hour 54 minutes doesn't really matter. 213.6 kilometers. So if you add that to that, uh, that means uh, quick math is uh, 233, 32 kilometers but we're going to do you know the calculations off camera but first off we are going to see if we do get any charging speed here um with the uh, okay is that manual focus sorry guys if we do get some charging speed because we have been on the road for two hours so we're gonna do that okay try not to crash into more charging poles and yeah, and also the outside temperature here is 6 degrees Celsius. Did I turn off the ignition? Yeah, I did. So the port won't open. Oh, there we go. We just had to press it like five times. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. I got my Ionity card. Authenticating. Okay, approved. And then let's do this one-handed. And as per usual, put some pressure to it. And Bjorn actually uh, explained this in a video, is that 
the bottom part of the connector is where the or the top part of the connector is where the uh, the connector uh, communicates with the car and it is an analog analog signal meaning that uh, these cables which are you know this charger is meant to deliver like 350 uh, kilowatts uh, this charger has a much thicker cable than you know a 150 kilowatt charger or a 50 kilowatt charger because of the the, the cooling that goes through the cable meaning that it's more heavy so when you just connect it when, when it's trying to communicate with the charger to authenticate um, uh, the top part of the chart uh, or the connector here might not be in proper contact right might be just a millimeter or two uh, there is some error margin there but you know the threshold might be uh, just w w outside of the threshold so that that's why these chargers sometimes you know uh, fail uh, so that's why help holding the charger uh, cable while authenticating will help so let's see if we get any charging speed here seven percent state of charge we are at 96 kilowatts we've been connected for about three minutes and we are getting 100 kilowatts of charging speed and it has now been confirmed that the Audi e-tron does not preheat the battery while putting the destination or a charger into the GPS or navigation but it will do some preheating if it's minus 10 degrees or colder but yeah, it doesn't seem like that either, guys. Even though it was like minus six and a half degrees right before we got to the charger here, we've had temperatures at, yeah, below minus, you know, we had minus 16 at the coldest today. So it might be because of it's, it dipped, you know, above minus 10, minus 10 degrees Celsius. We'll have to do this test again when it is minus 10. But uh, the e-tron has some uh, pretty awesome battery management here where it should you know heat the battery while charging so we'll see in about maybe when we pass the 10 minute mark uh, or 15 minute mark and see if we get to more distance speed but right now we are quite heavily cold gating been charging for about 10 minutes now and you can see the speed has now creeped up to 120 kilowatts I want to check in one last time at maybe around 20, 25 minutes just to see how high speed we actually do get. Five minutes later, guys, and we are getting 144 kilowatts of charging speed and the ambient temperature is minus six degrees Celsius. Yeah, this is the reason why a lot of people are saying that the Audi e-tron doesn't preheat the battery because it just with the electricity generated from the charger, it will get up to temperature quite quickly. It would be nice with a preheating button. I mean, if you would get that 150 kilowatts right away, I think that would be quicker. But guys, 147 kilowatts, we're getting maximum speed now after just 16 minutes of charging. That is very impressive. So according to my calculations, if you take the battery pack here at 86 and a half kilowatt hours divided by 34 and a half, and then you subtract about, let's say 3%, it might be 2% heat loss. You're at around 240, 45 kilometers of real world range with today's conditions. So about 10 kilometers more than the board computer is saying. So there is about a 10 kilometer margin there and I think that's about right. I have driven off camera this car down to zero kilometers of range on the board computer and zero percent state of charge. So there is thankfully some error or margin, some safety buffer there, if you will. But yeah, not too bad considering we have had temperatures between minus, you know, six and a half degrees and 16 degrees Celsius today. Though the conditions have been nice, we have had damp roads and even dry roads on today's uh, trip. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you hope you enjoyed this type of video, if you did, let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make, you know, more, you know, these uh, uh, range tests in the cold, efficiency tests in the cold, along with the charging test. I think a lot of you people might be interested, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below. So if you like this video, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.